it was one of the hottest summers on record, July 2002. So hot that the cooked residents of Ditchfield didn't notice as their friends and neighbours disappeared into the haze. A string of six disappearances, no evidence, no known motive and no convictions in over ten years. I'm Lacey and in this episode I'll be telling you about the case of the mysterious disappearances of the Ditchfield Six, where the only link between the victims was their location. Hey, Marty. How's it go? Okay. Uh-huh. Less... okay. But what about... really? I don't think we can. Okay. No worries. Thanks for calling. Joseph. Are you okay? What's wrong? We lost our supplier. He can't keep up with demand. Does that mean we have to, um... Mrs. Gambon, your beetroot bread is on its way. Thank you. Thank you. Keep your hands to yourselves when you've got customers. So? What about that old lady? In the purple coat? Why her? She was by herself. Alone? What about that Gambon woman? Oh, come on, Jeremy. She's well known and, and... hated. Everyone will start to notice. She's one of our regulars. This other woman, no one would notice. Like, what choice do we have? Find another supplier. You know that we can't. Fine. Okay, I'll go and arrange it. And I'll do it. Oh, uh, welcome to... You're Jason, right? Yeah, that's me. To what do I owe the pleasure? We've got some fat going spare soon. Okay. So we thought it would be nice for you if you can have some so you can make use of it for your special candles. Oh, like tallow. Oh, that's that's very nice of you. Thanks very much. Do you want a tea? I can't stay long, mate. The ovens are on. Well, uh, when do you want me to come round and pick it up? Any time tomorrow. And that way, we can pack it up for you. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much. Sincerely, I mean it. It's OK. We've got to stick together for a place like this. <sighs> Hello. I work at the bakery. Cool. And we got a great promotion for a brand new product. Is that how you get your customers? <laughs> it's completely free. You could get a snack out of it. So, what do you say? I've got nothing better to do. Brilliant. Just come with me. First batch is done. When the batches go on sale, it will attract more new customers like you. Try anything you like. Mmm, this is delicious. What's in it? Um, I'm not quite sure. Typical pastries. I think Jeremy added more spice.
Hey, is the fat ready yet? What? Oh, yeah. Um, the fat is under the counter support, yeah. Here you go. You alright, Jason? Yeah? Why? Do I look okay? You just seem a bit out of his all. I got one of those headaches. Migraine. Alright, you, you take it easy this evening, yeah? Thanks again. See you later. Morning, Mrs. Gunman. I've got your order right here. Thank you. Is there a problem? Miss Gunman, is everything all right? I wondered if you'd got any more. Hi, um, you must be Mrs... Mrs Rachelson, news reporter. I must say it is a pleasure to meet the most famous butcher and bake duo. Um, which one of you is Mr... Um... Mr Bamford. Oh, hello. A pleasure to meet you, sir. So I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions and then I'll be at your way. Sounds good. Okay. So, question number one. What made you change your original button, beaten... Uh... Beetroot. Ah, uh, be oh. Yeah. Yes. Recipe. We just thought it's time for a change, really. Mmm, a very delicious change. <laughs> the investigation reveals that Nielsen and the unknown victim got talking in a local pub. After closing time, the young man went back to Nielsen's home. The following morning, Nielsen was faced with the prospect of yet another person leaving him, and so he grabbed a tie, stood over his victim, and snuffed the life from yet another innocent man. What is more disturbing is that afterwards, Nielsen claimed to have felt tranquil in this moment, laying beside the corpse of a person that had shown him nothing but good intentions. It's nothing short of bizarre that following the murder, Nielsen kept the body around as company. Years later, the disappearances of the Ditchfield Six were followed up by a further seven, the killers once again picking their victims seemingly at random, making the already murky police investigation even harder. But, at long last, the truth is out. Joint owners of an often overlooked deli, Jeremy Bamford and Jason Bromley, have pleaded guilty to the Ditchfield Six and the more recent disappearances. Their victims found a grisly fate, baked into their successful beetroot bread and who knows what else. While police are still unsure of a motive, it is no mystery that the number of victims rounds up to a baker's dozen. <laughs>